how to install an automatic irrigation system. Now we're going to be installing all these parts into the ground and the end result we want is something like this, a quality well covered system. Now we're going to be covering the controller installation, solenoid installation, installing the wiring in conduit, installing the main supply pipe and driveway prelays, as well as all the digging, all the bat filling, tips and tricks along the way. And I hope you get some useful information out of this video. Now I'm just going to be narrating as I go along. I'm not doing multiple takes. I've got 18 minutes today, so I'm just going to explain what I've done and why I'm doing it. I've been installing irrigation for around 20 years. And where I live in Perth, Western Australia, it's almost completely unregulated for the domestic market, meaning anyone can say they're a professional and do it. So I've mainly been self-taught along with a lot of small courses and working with other professionals. And along the way, I have seen the good, the bad and the ugly. And I want to help you not make all the mistakes that I've made and that I've seen made along the years. Basically, this video I made when I created a course, How to Install an Automated Irrigation System, which has 47 videos and goes for two hours and has a detailed downloadable parts list as well as a tool list and showcases me installing the irrigation part by part, piece by piece. But I also made a time lapse of me doing this, which I've condensed down to 18 minutes for you. So I'm just going to narrate as I go along and hopefully you get something useful out of this. All right, let's measure the depth. Almost 400 mil, that's pretty good for a driver. Now, one of the first things you want to do is dig a nice deep trench. Like the saying always says, it's better to be over-prepared than under-prepared. So I would always dig a little bit deeper than what you need, a little bit wider than what you need, just so that you can get your hands down on either side of the pipe if you need to cut pipe work, and also so that you can compact the saw nicely on either side of the pipe particularly when you're installing large pipes. So this was a driveway that we're digging. Like I said previously, we dug down about 400 mil deep as we had to put a 90 or 100 mil stormwater pipe in and install smaller piping inside of it. When you're installing a 100 mil pipe, um, basically that takes up 100 mil, so it's only 300 mil down. And going a little bit deeper just means there's less likely to be pressure and less likely also to be hit if anyone's digging or doing anything else. Now the ground here was incredibly, incredibly rocky and hard, so I used a demolition drill, crowbar, pickaxe, as well as a shovel, and as you can see, I hired some cheap labour, which cost me basically nothing to get the job done. Um, the reason I didn't use a machine or an excavator is just because there was old clay pipes in the ground, there's some electrical wiring, and when you use a machine, you always run the risk of hitting something, and I really didn't want to do that, even with dial before you dig, as I wanted things to go smoothly and I just felt this was a better way of doing it. Now, this was a lot of digging. The demolition drill worked really, really well. Um, basically, this driveway here was full of rocks, so managed to get a lot of them out. Now, we're installing the solenoids here uh, for the job. The main cut-in is over where I started, but this is where the four solenoids are being installed. I also made sure that there were spare wires in this valve box here, so that if anybody needed to add solenoids on later on, they could, or connect anywhere off the main supply line. The controller also had a couple of free ports in it, meaning that people could install additional solenoids as they needed to. This was so much work. I filmed it uh, when I had spare time over a couple of months in between jobs and doing other things. I took a bit of time off to do it. Um, now the particular pipe that I used I'll show you shortly but it's blue line plumbing piping a really strong pipe which is great for really rocky areas like this in the hills uh, just because it's tougher and you also don't need any joints you can buy the whole roll that you need and just roll it out particularly when you're going underneath driveways you want to make sure you've got no joints because a joint is a potential weak spot I do the same with my wiring which you'll see soon absolutely no joints in the wiring only in the solenoid pit itself. That means that there's no chance of the wiring shorting anywhere underneath the ground. This is your master solenoid valve, which I use a tested master solenoid valve, which is tested in a factory. And we connected that onto the plumber's cut-in, which basically has a tap, an emergency isolation tap to turn off the irrigation, and a check valve, a one-way valve that allows water through, but won't allow it back into your drinking supply. So the first thing I did was put plenty of thread seal tape on and do it up nice and tight. And then we connected our blue line plumbing piping in. And basically what we did here was there were some existing solenoids in the property. So we connected that onto our plumber's cut-in. 
just so that these pipes and solenoids could be used in the future. And then we basically ran the blue line plumbing pipe in underneath this transportable building. Okay, see this large white piping? That large white piping is called stormwater piping. And this is a driveway here, backyard driveway. And we're gonna put the stormwater piping from the garden bed underneath this driveway to the other garden bed. And then inside that stormwater piping, we're gonna have this strong blue line plumbing piping that's the main supply pipe that's gonna feed these solenoid valves. And we're gonna have this gray conduit inside the large stormwater piping too. And the wiring, that wiring will be inside the gray conduit. This stormwater pipe protects it, just like shoes protect your feet. It's a protective covering that just protects the wiring and piping. It's down pretty deep. We've got it down about 400 there. Um, you do need to be careful if you're digging that deep. Do dial before you dig. Make sure there's no services, particularly things like power, gas, all that sort of stuff. I know there's no services along here, but still do dial before you dig because you will hit stuff if you're not careful and you want to be really, really safety conscious. So I'm installing the sleeve underneath the driveway, the protective pipe and we're pushing this blue line plumbing piping through it. We've taped the end of the pipe up so dirt doesn't get into it, and we're pushing it all the way underneath the driveway. Now the only drone we have is where we had to connect onto the irrigation prelay we did underneath the transportable, but it's outside of the driveway area. So if the driveway is ever concreted, there's no join underneath there, no potential weak spot. It's really important to be well prepared. Here we are at the controller and dropout. You can see I've left the wire there to connect onto and roll out for these solenoids. Now we're installing an Enki solenoid pre-made manifold. Basically, this is a pre-made solenoid manifold kit that can easily be installed. It keeps things nice and neat and tidy, and you can also easily unscrew the solenoids if you ever need to for servicing. These particular solenoids have screws on top of them which basically means you can take off the top and replace the internals anyway if ever needed. And we house them in these nice strong boxes. Now, one thing I always do is flush the main pipe really well like this prior to installing the solenoids. This just ensures that the solenoids aren't blocked up with dirt once you've had them installed. Now we install all our wiring and conduit, as you can see. Many people don't do this. And I actually didn't realize, but most houses don't have the wiring and conduit inside the house either. It's something you pay extra for. I just find with irrigation or reticulation, as we call it in Western Australia, it's really, really important to have it in conduit, as if it's not, it's too easy to be just chopped through with a shovel, or even things like tree roots can break it apart over time. Uh, it's a very time consuming and tedious task, as you've got to individually thread each piece of conduit through the wire, and you've got to do it in a particular way. If you do it the wrong way, then it doesn't work, and you have to start all over again. So I've had to do it on the other side here as well. Now, one thing that's important with the wiring is to use the right size of wiring. So if you've got an eight station controller, you're gonna to wanna to use say a 13 core wiring. And core wiring is basically the amount of individual wires inside that plastic protective sort of sheath. Um, and so always have enough wires for the controller that you've got. Otherwise, if you go to add extra valves on, you don't have enough wires, it's very, very frustrating. So you don't actually need to put the conduit inside the stormwater pipe, but I've done that as well. You could simply just put the wire inside of it because the stormwater pipe kind of acts like conduit anyway. Um, but this is what I've done. I have put the wiring inside the stormwater pipe and I've pushed it all the way underneath. Now, quite often I'll run an also an additional wire just in case people want to upgrade the controller later on as well. For example, uh, if we've got a 12 station controller, I might run two runs of 13 core wiring. So I've got 26 wires. Now this is nice and neat. One thing about conduit is it can be bent. Now uh, you can either use a heat gun to actually bend it and make a 90 degree angle, or you can just bend it gradually. With a nice gradual bend like that, no problems with bending the conduit. Just glue it on, bend it, and connect it all up. So you can see there is our solenoid pit up there. And we had to pull everything through. So now that I've got the wiring through, 
I've untaped it and then I've had to pull the wiring all the way through. There, nice and gentle. Don't go too hard. Gentle, 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 gentle. Now you can glue conjure it together. Um, you don't have to either. If you glue it, you can't take it apart. Either way, you're better off putting your wiring in conduit. Uh, now, with the controller itself, I typically use Rainbird, which is nice and neat. Look at that. Beautiful. Beautiful. Not many people do this. Now, watch this. I'm wiring up the master solenoid. I use these blue Scotch Locks wire connectors. They're one mil, and they are very, very solid. Okay. So see the solenoid, the coil on the top there and see those two wires that come up? One goes to the individual solenoid wire and one goes to the black wire that every single valve is joined into. It doesn't matter which one of those wires goes to either. As long as one of those wires coming from the top of the solenoid goes into the individual solenoid wire. And this individual solenoid wire is wired to the corresponding terminal in the controller. You'll see that later on. In the controller, we're going to wire this red wire into the port in the controller that says M, which stands for master valve. And the black wire is going to go to a port that says C, common. And every black wire is connected to this black wire. Okay? But not every valve is connected to the individual valve wire. So every valve has their own individual wire, and they're all connected to the black common wiring. Now I've left the loop of wiring on top of each solenoid valve. This easily accessible wiring means I can connect onto the irrigation wiring if I ever need to add additional solenoids in nice and easily. I love these strong commercial spotter boxes. They have all the cutouts so that I can place the box on top of the pipe without putting pressure on the pipe, potentially breaking it. And that black fabric underneath, that's geofabric mesh, a mesh that covers the holes to stop dirt getting back in. Okay, we're gonna start on one. Put some time on it and then I'm just going to press the manual button there. Okay. And you little beauty. Oh, it's working beautifully. That's solenoid number one. All right, let's run back. Hope you're as excited as I am. I get so excited every time this happens. Uh, let's go to solenoid number two. Okay, let's go. It's started. You little beauty. Look at that. All right. Oh, I love this part of the job. All right. Now we're gonna try solenoid number three. It's just about to rain here, so. All right, that's started. You ready? Oh, lovely. So lovely, turning on automatically. All right, let's turn on station number four. For all you people from other countries, too lovely is an Australian expression. All right, let's go. Solenoid number four, you little ripper. Let's see if you can start. And solenoid number four is activating. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I'm so happy.